I welcome you to the IDKD refresher series for diseases of the chest and would like to present you my case called Milkshake. My name is Thomas Fraunfelder and I'm the Deputy Director of the Institute of Diagnostic and Interventional Radiology at the University Hospital of Zurich. Here the clinical information on my case. I will present you a 74-year-old male with increased dyspnea, productive cuff and combined restrictive as well as obstructive ventilation defect. In 1997, an essential thrombocytopenia was diagnosed and in 2011, a post-essential thrombocytopenia myelofibrosis was added. When he arrived, an initial chest radiograph was performed. This chest radiograph showed bilateral, bilateral nodular configuration and confluent pattern with ground glass opacities and consolidations. These were diffuse, distributed over both lungs, a little bit more on the left side. Afterwards, a CT was performed that showed bilateral, more lower lobe distributed ground glass opacities with some collidation and some reticulation and septal thickenings, as you can see here. So, in summary, we have a chest radiograph showing bilateral, perihilar, nodular and confluent pattern with ground class opacities and on the HRCT we have a bilateral lower lobe distribution of ground class opacities with a superimposed reticulation and parenchymal consolidation which is also well known as crazy paving. So what is the final diagnosis? We are dealing here with a pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. Image differential considerations for the specific pattern include crazy paving pattern, ground glass opacities and miliar opacities. If we go to the overview where how we get to the parenchymal changes on HRCT, we can differentiate between an ink increased or decreased attenuation. In our case, we are dealing with an increased attenuation, which can either reflect nodules, ground glass, reticular pattern and consolidation. You may well know the nodular diseases like tree in butt, sarcoid-like lesions or the infectious. On the reticular pattern, you have all types of fibrosis and on consolidation, the infectious diseases ground class can be hemorrhage or lung edema as well. In our case, we have a combination of the ground class and the reticular pattern. This leads to the so-called crazy paving, which appears in edema, hemorrhage, infectious, alveolar proteinosis and bronchoalveolar carcinoma. The crazy paving pattern is defined as the appearance of ground glass opacities with superimposed interlobular and intralobular septal thickening with, and is a not specific finding. What you can see is that it is restricted more to the secondary lobule. Here see the, the border of a secondary lobule. Inside you have the ground glass opacities and the septal thickening and also the intral interlobular septal thickening, but just adjacent there is a total normal secondary lobule, as you can see here with the central dot. Pulmonary alveolar proteinosis is caused by an altered surfactant homeostasis and leads to a surfactant accumulation in the secondary lobule. Patient presents with dyspnea and cough, but other symptoms are rare. 90% of cases are autoimmune, but as in our case, it also can appear after toxic inhalation or hemo hematological disorders. 
CT findings are suggestive for pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, as you have the crazy paving, and in combination with the clinical findings, and especially the bronchiovalar lavage, it's diagnostic. The bronchiovalar lavage shows this milky fluid with full of foamy alveolar macrophage. The gold standard for diagnosis would be biopsy, but is not needed. The therapeutic part is a bronchiovalar lavage in full anesthesia with some liters of fluid, which leads to a clearance of this milky fluid. If we look to the differential diagnosis, I present you a 55-year-old male with former airway disease and currently increased problems with oxygenation breathing. You see also here we have a reticulation from the intra and interlobal receptor and apart we have totally normal secondary lobules. We have a ground class opacity which is in the behind of this image on both sides. In this patient we are dealing with an influenza A virus infectious which also can lead to disappearance of a crazy paving. Also here we have a patient of 35 year old with an AML after trans bone marrow transplantation. We also here see this ground class opacity mostly perihilar dominant with some nodularities inside. If you look at the CT image we see here this ground class opacities, the tiny reticulation. What is important the airways are not uh, infected and so show no accumulation. Further down we see also see this crazy paving with beside normal lung tissue and then this reticulation. We have here a apico-basal gradient with almost no influence in the basal part. Also there is no fluid or uh, pleural effusion visible. In this case, we are dealing with a pneumocystis carini pneumonia, which is nowadays the most common diagnosis in patients with crazy paving. Here another case of a RDS and pneumocystis carini pneumonia in a patient with su suffering HIV infectious. Here you clearly can see the beside of this crazy paving as it would be shown with some normal parts and pathological parts. This brings me to the end of my presentation and I want to summarize the pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. On chest radiography we have the bilateral, nodular and confluent pattern with ground class opacities. On the HRCT, we find the typical pattern of crazy paving, and in the bronchial lavage, we have the most pathognomic finding this milky shake, which after lavage turns into clear fluid. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Here, I provide you some literate feature and I wish you all the best for the future.